In this video, we are going to derive the equation for double slit interference. On the bottom right of the screen, you can see an image which is cropped from the simulation that you can see in front of you here. This is a virtual physics lab simulation that Dr. John Nunn has very kindly given me permission to use in these videos. This is not a paid for promotion, but if you're interested, you should look on the National Physical Laboratory for the Virtual Physics Labs software and you can get licensing information there for that. So the equation we are going to derive is one that relates four variables. The distance between two slits in some sort of screen that's blocking light, and we'll call that distance S. The distance between that screen and another screen onto which the interference pattern is being projected, and we can call that D. The distance between two adjacent bright fringes on the interference pattern and you can see the interference pattern beneath me. And finally, lambda, the wavelength of the light. Now what we're going to do is try to visualize this picture where we're just looking at two adjacent fringes. Fringe A, which is right in the center, and fringe B. The light from the two slits, slit one and slit two, arrives at point A in phase. That's why it forms a bright fringe and the light from slit 1 and slit 2 arrives at point B in phase. And that's why there's a bright fringe there as well. At point A, the path length from S1 to A is equal to the path length from S2 to A. And that's why there is zero path difference and hence zero phase difference. At point B, the path length from S1 to B is smaller than the path length from S2 to B and the amount it is smaller by is lambda. This means that the phase difference is 2 pi radians, which is equivalent to 0 radians. It means we have constructive interference at B. And if I were to pick a point halfway between point A and point B, then the path difference from slit 1 to that point and from slit 2 to that point would be half a wavelength, giving me a phase difference of pi radians and destructive interference, and that would be a dark fringe. But I'm just focusing on these two bright fringes for now. So let us start with this triangle, from A to O to B, where my angle is at O. And I've just labeled this angle theta for now. This triangle is a right-angled triangle because point A is equidistant from slit one and slit two. Now this is a right-angled triangle, so I can use trigonometry. I know tan of this angle, which I've labelled theta, is going to be equal to W, the distance between two adjacent bright fringes, divided by D, the distance between the screen with the slits on it and the screen onto which I am projecting the interference pattern. So I have this equation here. The next step is to look at another triangle. So the second triangle we're going to look at is this small triangle here. It's a bit small to see on this diagram, but I can zoom in. Now, if you look at this diagram, I've labelled this part here theta, this angle here, the angle at S1. And we've got lambda as the opposite to this angle. Is this a right angle triangle? Well, no, not quite. As long as theta is very small and D is very large, then this angle at the bottom gets closer and closer to a right angle. So we're going to do an approximation here and we're going to approximate this bottom angle to 90 degrees. It's almost 90 degrees. Now we can use trigonometry on this triangle. Sine of that angle is equal to the opposite, which is lambda, divided by the hypotenuse, which is s. Now I've used the same angle letter here, and that's because it is the same angle. This gray line is perpendicular to this purple line here. And this gray line here is perpendicular to the line between S1 and S2. Therefore, this angle theta is equal to this purple angle theta. They are the same angle. So I've got tan theta, I've got sine theta. At very small angles, tan theta will equal sine theta. And if you don't believe me, grab a calculator and do the sine of one degree and then take the arc tan of that and you get something that's very close to one degree or take the tan of two degrees, then take the arc sine of that, and you get something very close to two degrees. The smaller the angle, the closer tan theta becomes to sine theta. 
So this is what we call a small angle approximation. And as long as the distance between our fringes is sufficiently small, and the distance between our screens is sufficiently large, then this is a perfectly good approximation to use. Well, tan theta equals w over d. Sine theta equals lambda over s. So if tan theta equals sine theta, then w over d equals lambda over s. And we can rearrange that equation to make the separation between bright fringes the subject. Now these are all four distances, so we have to make sure we're using the same units. If you have a look at the little picture just beneath me here, you can see the two slits, the slit here and the slit here. Those two slits have a separation between them, but each slit also has a width of its own. When you look at the interference pattern, you notice that you have a central region, which is quite bright, then a dark patch, and then a patch next to it, then a dark patch, then a patch next to it. Those larger regions are caused by single slit interference, and we'll cover that in a separate video. The double slit interference that we're interested in, you can see within this bright central fringe. When you look very closely, you'll see there are vertical lines. Those are the fringes. And if I move the slit separation so the slits are closer together, those fringes get further and further apart within that central region. And that's because, if you look at this equation here, the slit separation is inversely proportional to the fringe spacing. So if I make the slits further apart, the fringes get closer together. We can also look what happens when I change the wavelength. So right now we have red light, which is quite a large wavelength. If I reduce the wavelength, I should reduce the fringe separation. You can see there are so many fringes within a certain area in this middle part here. But if I decrease the wavelength, so I use green light instead of red, the distance between fringes is now noticeably smaller. And if I decrease it further, so the wavelength is even smaller, so blue light, then the separation between fringes is even smaller. As I mentioned in all of these demonstrations, you have to be careful that you're looking for the double slit interference pattern. There is a single slit interference pattern that you can see over the top superposed. And I'll show you that now. That is the single slit interference pattern that is simply due to the width of the slit. And we have to ignore this single slit interference pattern and just look within this bright central fringe to observe the double slit interference pattern we're interested in. Anything outside that central region, we can discard. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please do like and subscribe if you do find it useful, because then you'll be notified when more videos are released. Thank you.